Yo, what's up, what's up, what's up? Hello everybody, Gara here. Welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm going to talk about Skyweaver. I think I prefer in Skyweaver over other card games right now. Let's just jump right into it. First, I have to start with the economy of the game. The game is free to play to earn. What does that mean? You can start the game with basically nothing. You can unlock all the cards completely for free by just playing the game. You level up, uh, if you rank up you get like a bonus amount of cards, I believe six or eight. And other than that, just while playing you can uh, unlock the cards. And the end game is basically if you get good, you unlock the higher tier of cards. It's the same cards, it's just like cosmetics. Uh, the rarer cosmetics in the game are more valuable and you can essentially sell those at the marketplace uh, for uh, cryptocurrency and then use that cryptocurrency to enter the conquest mode to earn the most valuable skins of the cards which are the golden version of a card which are essentially NFT versions of cards and you can sell those for even more money to for just profit or uh, you know just, just keep playing. Uh, but the basic versions of the card, which are basically the same cards as the gold versions of the card, which I just mentioned, is just a kit. Uh, it's a, just a skin uh, or a cosmetic for the cards. Uh, it's just the same card. So the base cards are completely free to earn. You can completely unlock them for free. And the end game, the better you get, the more money you can make with the game. So it's, I think this is the future of a just gaming in general um basically that you get compensated for uh, your time or for and for your skills so the better you get at the game the more time you spend uh, the more money you make uh, and on top of it it's completely for free so i already talked a bit about the nft versions of cards so basically there's three versions currently of a card the base version and then there's the silver version the silver version is the silver version of a card again it's just like a silver border of the base cards uh, those cards have roughly the value of uh, a ticket uh, an in-game ticket that you need for uh, entering the conquest modes and in the conquest mode you can um, obtain these rare golden cards and so one silver card has roughly the value of 1.5 dollars which is uh, essentially a ticket so and then you have these golden cards so every uh card has a golden version which is only mintable that's just another way of saying of like creating these cards uh during one week uh essentially so every week there's like a rotation of eight cards uh, eight version golden versions of a card which you can obtain through conquest mode and everybody can do that you have to win three games in a row in conquest and then you basically get one at random of the eight available golden cards of a certain week and then once that week passes those cards are never mintable again and that's why they become like a limited uh, later on um, they will make these cards even animated change the skins but they will never reintroduce or never make the same card ever mintable again in the future. So uh, some cards are very rare, especially cards that are played a lot in Constructed, um, are very valuable just because people buy them and don't really sell them and there's just only a limited amount available of them. So that's basically the, uh, how NFTs are introduced in uh, this game. With that, I can go to the next point, the value of your collection. Compared to different card games, um, your collection is worth money, essentially. So I played Hearthstone for many, many years, and I spent a lot of money on uh, expansions, cards, uh, packs, and crafting cards. And after years, like there's different set rotations, and then cards become essentially worthless if you uh, don't play wild which is the evergreen format in the game which is the non-competitive format of the game but also after years when you decide to quit the game your collection is worthless in skyweaver 
you can always sell your golden cards your silver cards and yeah then you get money for it if you decide to quit the game so your, your collection is worth money which is again i think way 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 better going forward into the future i think that's also like a, a, rev a revolution in the gaming space especially for strategy games especially for card games and yeah i think that's a no-brainer that also this aspect will take over just because it's better than we had in the past so i want to talk a little bit about the game client so there's different ways of playing the game uh, you can play it in any browser you can play it on your mobile phone you can download the desktop app uh, there's so many ways to just play you don't even have to download the game like i said you can just play it in a browser you can connect your uh, twitch it's super super easy super clean and yeah i think that's also really awesome if you just want to try out the game like i said it's for free you don't have to spend any money and you just can play it from anywhere another thing i want to talk about is the current stage of development and where the game is at compared to other games so i really really like the you, you it's very difficult to compare a game like this that is much earlier in stages of development compared to a game like let's say magic the gathering or hearthstone which is like out for so much longer so obviously a game like hearthstone has way more game modes way more cards you know way more features just because it's out longer but it doesn't mean it's better so for uh, the amount of time that was spent in development for this game uh, it is very clean the developers I talked with them uh, they're very responsive they are really eager to improve the game constantly and yeah like that's one thing that is very important for me especially uh, the design philosophy and um, what they have planned for the game in the future because many times I did that in the past that uh, I started off playing a game which I really enjoyed and then uh, um, the way the game was headed was not in line with what I prefer or liked about the game so after a few years the game became essentially something completely different when I started off playing the game so this is something that I look uh, forward to um, in games that I start playing a lot because I spend so much time playing games, especially strategy games, and I just don't want my time to be wasted because, uh, especially with strategy games, it's not something that you really wanna quit immediately because it takes quite a bit of time to learn, obtain the skills, and become good at the game, and then you don't want, you know, the disruptive game balance or whatever and then you kind of have to quit and play something better with that i want to jump right into the competitive aspect of sky Viva, which is basically my number one incentive of playing strategy games i like competing i like climbing ladders uh, i like uh, creating strategies and building decks this is also what most of you guys know me for um what I really, really, really like about a game like this, even though the game is currently relatively small compared to the giants of the industry like Magic or Hearthstone or Legends of Runeterra even, um, there's some people that already make a living by just playing the game, uh, becoming, uh, they're really, really good at the game. They're farming these golden NFT cards and they sell them at the marketplace and yeah, then they have the money. So they... They're not reliant on the publisher or the CEO or the game studio, whatever, who is behind the game to or to create tournaments and hoping to qualify for these tournaments or hoping to get invited. Like in case of Blizzard, most of their big tournaments are invitational only. So you have to be a big streamer to get invited or be popular already. It's a, it's a really like bad system um especially for newer players so in a game like this you can just be good at the game and you will get immediately compensated and rewarded which is awesome and i also think that's revolutionary and that's the future of uh, uh, competitive uh, online strategy games and esports and with that i can uh, uh, move over to game balance the game balance also is um, dealt with Probably like as good as you can with the current knowledge that we have. Um, so they're making small micro adjustments. So the two main game modes in this game are Discovery and uh, 
Conquest, Competitive, uh, competitive Constructed and Discovery. Uh, const uh, Discovery you can compare to Seal format in a Magic the Gathering. And so you basically get a new deck. So there's like five regions in this game and every region has around 106 cards. Or I think exactly 106 cards. And then you get like a random deck of 30 cards, uh, I believe for uh, every region. And there's like discovery rates. So the best cards have like a smaller discovery rate. So just to uh, uh, adjust the win rate of your deck so if a region starts overperforming compared to another region they uh, adjust the percentages uh, of the scale rates of certain cards which is awesome that really lets you nerf regions and buff regions um, pretty perfectly so the, like currently in this game between the worst performing card in Discovery and the best performing card, there's only a 10% win rate difference. That's pretty unheard of in card games. So this is probably the best balanced card game that I've ever played. And the way how they do it, it really feels like this will also not be an issue uh, in the future. I've been playing this game now for around five weeks, I believe. And now they introduced a mini expansion of 10 new cards. So every region got uh, one unit and one spell and yeah you it's they do also constant balance changes and adjustments and it feels really great like every uh, prism they're called in this game uh, feels playable uh, they mostly focus the game balance around constructed but the way how they can also do uh, balance discovery by adjusting the discovery rates of cards uh, seems to be working really nicely so far and yeah i think that's enough for this video uh, i hope you check it out you can also check out my stream i stream it pretty much daily on twitch to gara and yeah i'm i'm super excited to jump into this new experience of uh, blockchain gaming and yeah i hope you hope you guys enjoyed this video and see you guys next time gara out peace